this is similar to the topic of how there's always like a new superfood or diet that's touted as like a best new health approach. And there's so many people have their opinions on what, what's the best way to eat or what the best foods for this or that. So how do we know where to focus our energy when there are so many options out there? Yeah, I think this, again, I'm just going to bring it back to like whole foods. When I talk about fat, fiber, protein, those fats are whole food sources, avocados, eggs, olive oils, right? Really looking at what are the whole food sources, asking ourselves, where did this food come from? What am I eating? What am I putting in my body? Do I know these ingredients? If we start there, we are 95% of the way to where we need to be. I think it's important to look at the commonalities between a lot of these diets as opposed to the differences. Are there times and places where we need to be on a healing diet or a healing protocol? Yes. Those very limited protocols are meant to be done for a short period of time as a therapeutic intervention with somebody who understands that therapeutic intervention. And unfortunately, a lot of people are following very restricted diets for either too long or they're doing them incorrectly. They're introducing new deficiencies that are leading to new signs and symptoms. So I would just say whole foods, fat, fiber, protein, eat the rainbow, know your yes, no, maybe list. And you are 95, 98% of the way, for most people, it might be 100% of yeah. the way yeah. <laughs> there. And we don't have to go to these things. So when I look at that root of the genes, there's what we call epigenetic factors. So the epigenetic factors are the factors that influence the expression of our genes. And when I think about our genes, like I said, we can't change our genes, but we can change the expression of our genes with our epigenetic factors. Epigenetics, fancy word, break it down, food, movement, environment, and mindset. If I think about food, I'm thinking about quality, quantity, diversity, and timing. If we take one of those, diversity, go back to eat the rainbow. It's all interconnected. I'm simplifying it, even though it sounds really complex. It's really about getting simpler and slowing down what we're trying to do to help ourselves feel better. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really helpful to hear that it's it, it, like, I know it can be confusing, but you're, you're breaking it down and you're making it simple. Like just focus on these things. <laughs> yes. So Basically, when you are treating someone with a chronic illness, does that mean that a lot of the key dietary or lifestyle changes basically are kind of the same that you recommend to everyone? Or I guess, how do you recommend implementing changes? Yeah. So we have to, again, start slow and recognize what works for any one individual. And some of that is based on the physiological response. So what's happening in the body. If I say to somebody, eat a lot of fiber, fat, fiber, protein, and they have digestive issues, they're not going to do well with that fiber. And so we have to build up the system to be able to benefit from fat, fiber, and protein. I'll just tell the story. When I met my boyfriend over six years ago, when I first met him, he ate chicken, oatmeal, and rice, period. He wouldn't eat anything else. And we would <laughs> go out and I would get a big salad or a big bowl of greens. And he would be like, I wish I could eat that. And I was like, why can't you eat it? And he started to tell me on a drive one day, I can't eat garlic. I can't eat onions. And I was like, oh, okay. He has FODMAP issues. He can't digest certain foods. So he said, if you can help me eat a bowl of broccoli, you're the queen. And I was like, game on. Yeah, you're so the one to help. <laughs> You found the right one. <laughs> so just helping him add some things to his foods, to his smoothies that were all gut supportive. Now he can eat anything he wants, like literally anything, even foods that I wouldn't want him to eat. He but can that's eat. expertise that you have that exactly. I'm, I'm trying to extract 
something that our regular listeners can can implement in their life? Because I, I know many people don't have the, I guess, funds or resources to see a practitioner. Thousand percent. And I guess what I'm saying is that when you ask me the question of, is there one place, is it the same for everybody? I'm giving an example where fat fiber protein may lead somebody to say, I can't eat that much fiber. And then that's the place to focus. Why? What do I need to do? Can I go slowly with that? I'm, I'm really inviting people to tune in. If these are the principles, fat, fiber, protein, eat the rainbow, know your yes, no, maybe list. I'm all about the democratization of functional nutrition. This isn't about doing a bunch of testing. It's not about seeing a practitioner, but you have to stay in that place not run to the supplements. You don't need to shop at Whole Foods. Eating the rainbow, how does it feel? Which foods feel good, which don't? Just slow down, stay in the response of your body and know that your body is going to respond different. So fat, fiber, protein, eat the rainbow, know your yes, no, maybe list. That's the commonality. Mm, Beyond that, okay, got it. it's going to manifest differently for everybody in terms of, oh, when I eat meat, I, first of all, maybe I don't eat meat. Or when I eat meat, I have digestive issues. We have to tune in and ask the questions, when does this happen? What are the circumstances around this? Is this something I can explore right here for myself mm. versus what's the diet? What's the questions? I'm asking to reframe the questions, right? Yeah, yeah. So much of it, it, I guess to summarize, so much of it is tuning into your own body. Correct. And you really have to keep a journal because I think we just go about life and we forget our response. We don't even know what caused what. what so it's, yeah, it's getting clear and really understanding your body. <laughs> and it's a pain in the butt if you don't have a chronic health issue. So I get that. Like <laughs> functional practices serve those who are struggling. And unfortunately, that's a growing population. Oh, yes. Of people, a lot of people need that. And a lot more young women. And so I just feel like we're going about it all wrong. And if the information was out there and it was one food, one diet, one supplement, one way, we would have the answer because there's so much information available to us. We have Google, we have ChatGBT, we have Instagram influencers who are telling us all the solutions. So yeah, yeah. it's a big reframe about tuning in versus tuning out. And that's why every question you ask me I'm kind of reframing through a different lens. And that's what makes it functional. Yeah, it totally flips it because people are always searching, like you said, on social media, they hear a new a new diet, a new trend, a new healing food or whatever. And then they they go into that program trying to heal. But it's it's like you have to create your own customized program for yourself because everybody is different. Yes. And I can see in you the light bulb going like, mm. oh, wait, this is a reframe, <laughs> right. right? So, I see. and that's hard. I just want to acknowledge that that's hard for us to do. We live in a culture that tells us that there is a quick fix, that we are broken. And I just want to invite people to say like, it's not that complicated. It's you. Like <laughs> nourish yourself, just yeah. spend time with yourself. And when you do that, healing starts to happen in a whole new way because we've shifted our focus from the outside to the inside. 